If you would, grab your Bibles, and uh, you will need to go to Genesis 3. We are still in our series, and will be uh, for some time, and uh, talking about uh, the Bible from beginning to end, using the 20 C's. Last week, we started with the first C, uh, which was what, church, do you remember? Creation, yeah, not too hard to remember. Now, when we get to going on the 10th and 11th and 12th, it may be a little hard, but I'll help remind you. But last week, we studied creation out of Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. And uh, this week, we're going to uh, be in Genesis 3 and, and, and uh, three, 3 through 5. And, uh, but then, rapidly, we'll start picking up the pace because, obviously, we will not be able to spend that much time on each chapter uh, 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 of the Bible of each book, and so uh, there will be some lessons where we will actually do uh, a couple lessons at a time. And so I encourage you to grab your Bibles, go to Genesis chapter 3, and um, if you need a handout for tonight, you'll want one of those. I encourage you to get this, even if you're not normally a note taker. If you get one of these outlines and you keep this, um, you'll have a, a brief overview of every book of the Bible. It'll help you and give you a great understanding. Uh, you probably already have that, but I just think it'd be a good refresher even if you do. All right? Anybody need a handout tonight? Anybody raise your hand? And uh, over here, this section to my right. And uh, thank you. Are we out? There's some right there. Hey, good to see you guys. I don't know. Or maybe we're out. And uh, Okay, good. They're going to go find some. But anyway, grab your Bibles. Get to Genesis chapter 3. If you're in Genesis chapter 3, say amen. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. Good to see some of you folks tonight. Good to see you guys. Good. Thank you for coming. And, uh, and a wonderful, awesome. Anybody else need one? Miss Boots, you need one? You, you got one or no? You need one. She needs one right here, Brother Mike. Look at here. Personal delivery. There you go. Awesome, awesome. Now, in your handout, I told you this. Every week we're going to review, um, uh, or you see an overview, I should say, at the very top. Look at the very top of your handout. You should see an overview of what we're going to cover. So look at it with me. We're going to cover what scriptures, folks? Genesis 3 through... You got it. What's the focal point? What's the fall of mankind into sin? But who are the principal characters? Who are they? Say it with me. Satan, Eve, Adam, and God. Uh, what are the primary events? Well, we're going to talk about the temptation of Eve. Uh, we're going to talk about the rebellion of Adam. And then we're going to talk about the corruption of all things. And so hopefully you are in your handout and uh, in your Bible as well. And I want you to first see, and it's in your handout, it's the first big bold letters. I want you to see the subtlety of Satan. I want you to look at that. Look at Genesis chapter 3. And uh, man, everything was blissful in the Garden of Eden. Everything was perfect. Everything was lovely. Everything was in harmony. I mean, there was everything was just the environment was even perfect. And as you'll see in just a moment, uh, man, there was so much. Adam and Eve had so much liberty that uh, it was even conducive during this time that the animals talked. And it wasn't weird. And everything was perfect, but something happened. And ever since this happened, man has been out of fellowship or out of a relationship with God. And ever since then, God has been trying to restore or reconcile man unto himself because of this. And so creation was so lovely, but then corruption happened. Something horrible happened. Well, how did it happen? Well, let's look at Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God hath made, had made. And he said unto the woman, not God, but the serpent, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, I want you to first write this in. Satan and his subtlety, and by the way, subtlety means cunning. It means crafty. This isn't a good thing. Like, oh, that's a crafty individual. No, this means deceitful. He was very cunning. He was very slick. But in your handout, write this in. He first speaks through the serpent. Write in the word serpent. 
You know, Paul refers to him in 2 Corinthians eleven three. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He's mentioned also in the New Testament there. And, and the same way that Satan deceives us today is the same way that he deceived Eve. By the way, Satan doesn't have any new plan. It's always been the same plan. Deceitfulness, lies, doubt. And here, what you find is that he talks to Eve through the serpent's body. Now, and he tempts her through the, through the serpent. And, and you say, well, uh, isn't that odd that he would talk, uh, that the serpent would talk to Eve? I mean, why wasn't Eve uh, freaked out? Right? I mean, if a serpent started talking to you, would you be kind of like, all right, what was in the pizza I just ate? I mean, you'd be kind of panicky. All right? But also know that in Numbers 22, Balaam had a conversation with a donkey. Right? So, I mean, the thought is, and, and from study, um, it's apparent that Adam and Eve could communicate with the animal kingdom prior to the fall. I mean, everything was perfect. Imagine this. Everything was in perfect, a perfect state, perfect harmony, uh, perfect uh, uh, um, uh, uh, knowledge here in the fact that their minds were uh, uh, in a perfect state here before the fall. And so you got to think about this. Right now, things are still in, in, in perfectness. Everything's in harmony. Their minds were brilliant. Uh, things were different. And, and they could talk to the animals. And I know this is hard to believe because, folks, i got to be real honest with you. I hate snakes. Amen? Uh, you won't ever have to worry about this church handling snakes. Amen? Okay? We won't be that church. And uh, really, that's not a church that does that. Man, that's a cult. All right? And uh, you won't have to worry about that because the only good snake is a, a dead snake. You know that too, right? And uh, that's the kind of snake I like, one that's not moving anymore. And if you like snakes, well, you're just weird. And so, anyway, what I want you to notice here is that the, the serpent comes to her. And so I, so I want you to see the subtlety, and he's starting to talk. But I want you to also notice that he didn't come in a red suit with horns and a three-fork uh, 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 pitchfork. He, he didn't come... Like we see him portrayed. Do you realize that? He didn't come with some pointed tail and a red suit and, you know, and breathing fire out of his mouth and he, you know, had smoke coming out of off his horns and, hi, Eve. You know, I mean, that's not how it happened. And, and, and it appears that, that uh, Satan or, or the serpent himself was very beautiful. He was very flashy. And I want you to know that when Satan gives temptation, he has a well-marketing department. His, de his marketing department is well-equipped. He knows how to push his product. He knows how to uh, uh, sell what he's, what he's got. He knows how to display it perfectly. And to be honest with you, this is the same plan that was in Ezekiel 28. Does anybody know what happened in Ezekiel 28, 27, 28? Does anybody know? Satan was and was told about how God removed him from heaven. And Satan, where God cast him out of heaven because the Bible says in Ezekiel 28, you just write the reference down, you can read it, was lifted up by his own beauty. Now, folks, I need you to get this picture because it's going to really help you understand what happened here, why Eve was so easily duped and why Adam rebelled. I want, to, I want to tell you why. The reason is because what they were looking at was very beautiful. The Bible, God himself describes Satan in Ezekiel uh, 28, that he was very bright, that he was very beautiful, and that, that, that there was none like him. And, and, and that the Bible, even God said that he was perfect until sin was found in him. Imagine that. So here you have Satan talking through the serpent. And the Bible even says that he was one that was cl as clothed with jewels. I want you to understand here, he, he was very beautiful. 
Satan makes himself and appears very beautiful. But I also want you to know that from this point on, after this happens, Satan becomes a symbol for treachery and sin. Now, I want you to look at something, and I want you to hold your bookmarker in Genesis 3, and I want you to go to the last book of the Bible. What's the last book of the Bible, folks? Revelation. I want you to go to Revelation, if you would. And I want you to go to Revelation chapter 12. So hold your bookmarker in Genesis 3. We'll come, we're coming right back there. And I, I want you to look at Revelation chapter 12. Now, is, is Satan ugly or is he beautiful? He's beautiful. Now, what he does is not beautiful. But God described him as beautiful. Very beautiful. Look at Revelation chapter 12. Now, I want you to look at verses 9 through 11. Look how the Bible describes him though here. This is end times here. And the great dragon was cast out, that old what? Serpent, called the devil, capital D, and Satan, capital S, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Man, he's got a demonic system. He's got a hierarchy. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of, uh, of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him. How, does, how is Satan overcome? He's overcome by the what? Blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Hey, what's the only way and the only answer for sin? It's the blood of the Lamb. You're going to see it here in Genesis 3. And you see it all through Scripture. A sacrifice has to be made. An atonement has to be made. You know what we're going to tell people on Sunday? Someone has been sacrificed for your sin. There's been an atonement made. What was out of harmony now is in harmony again, if you will just receive it unto yourself. Okay, he, he's a symbol for treachery and sin. Look at chapter 20 of Revelation. Go there and, and, and look at verses 1 through 3. Twenty one through 3, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him in the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Hey, that'll be a great time. But folks, we aren't there yet. Satan's very active. He's very busy. The Bible describes him right now that he's the God, little g, of this world. God, a, 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 a Satan, little g, as a God of this world, is very active and very destructive. He's very subtle, and he used his sub subtlety to speak through the serpent to Eve. But then I also want you to know what else he does. In your handout, write this in. He then begins by doubting God's word. Okay? He begins... By doubting God's word. He's speaking to the serpent. Now go back to Genesis 3.1. And, and look what the Bible says. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, look at this. He says, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now I'm going to ask you something, folks. Did God say that Adam and Eve could not eat of every tree in the garden? Yes or no? No, he didn't. He, he, that's right. He only said one tree. Satan said, you know, didn't God say that he shall not eat, you shall not eat of every tree? There's a big difference between every tree and one tree. Right? Doubt. God's not really... God really didn't say what he think he said. Did God really say what he said? Well, now just think about it. I, I'm not really sure. No, only one tree that Adam and Eve were told not to eat of. Satan creates doubt through the question, Yea, 
hath God said? In verse 1, this is how Satan attacks. He attacks through doubt. Did God really mean what he said? Did he really say that to you? Did he really give you the truth, by the way? Satan wants you to doubt God's word. And by the way, those that will be here on Sunday have heard God's word probably. Many have heard it over and over. And you know what they're coming? A lot of people will come on Sunday with skepticism. They're going to come with some doubts. Yeah, I hear you. I see your little skit thing. I see your Jesus. Yeah, I see all that. Yeah. What's that mean to me? We're going to tell them what it means. And I want you to know that every person that comes on Sunday that you will invite. Amen? Amen. Think about this, folks. If every one of us just invited one person, we'd double, right? Does that make sense to you? We would double. I'm praying and hoping that we will be more in burden than just inviting one. But just think of this. Every person that comes on Sunday, you know what we're going to do? We're going to remove all doubt for them. That way, they, when they leave this place, Brother Mason, on Sunday, they will have no excuse for rejecting the King of Kings. They have no more excuse for denying the cross work of Jesus Christ. They have no more excuse to say that He's not alive, that He's not risen. We're going to give them every uh, scripture and every point that we can to tell them he is alive and there's a purpose in the resurrection and that purpose is to give you hope and eternal life my friend if you deny that today listen you will die in your sins do not reject Christ receive him as your savior today Satan is continually trying to get people to doubt his word they don't believe it but not only does he create that doubt but then you're also in your handout uh He ends by distorting God's word. Write that in. So he talks to the serpent. He gets gets them to doubt, or Eve to doubt it, and then he distorts it. Look at Genesis 3-4. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Say, what do you mean? Well, Look at verse 3. No, verse 2, back up. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. She corrected him. Like, no, we can, we can eat. But then she says, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. We'll come back to that. But then verse 4, and the serpent always has a, has a backup plan. Oh, he always has another strategy. And the serpent said unto the woman, you're not going to die. I mean, God's... Re- Boy, he pushed that. He must have been a Baptist because he really exaggerated there. God really stretched that truth. God, God really pushed the envelope there. Uh, I'm not so sure that God told you the truth. I mean, I, I know he said that, but it, that's not what he meant. So Satan distorts God's word. And what's amazing to me is that Eve begins to match wits with Satan. Eve tries to add things to God's word here. Look back at verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Hey, church, did God tell them not to touch the fruit? That's nowhere in Scripture. God didn't say you can't touch it. He said don't eat of it. He says don't eat it. He didn't say don't touch it. I'm going to tell you something. When we start adding and taking away from God's word, trouble, problem. So Eve's like, oh, you know, I'm really confused. And and, whoa, she goes, you know what? He said don't even touch it. This is very dangerous. People stand up in the pulpit and in churches every week and add and take away from God's word. My friend, it's dangerous. It's heresy, and it's wrong. It's wrong. But then, in your handout, I want you to write this. He ends by denying God's word. Do you have that? Are you missing that? Are you guys missing a blank? All right. 
I just noticed that you guys, I think you guys are missing something. All right. He, spree, he speaks to the serpent. Do you have that? Awesome. He begins by doubting God's word. Okay. You should have. He begins or he, he, he continues to distort God's word. That's not in your handout. Okay. Sorry about that. You, sh- you guys should have had that. Sorry about that. But then you do need to write this in because this is the right blank for here. He ends, he ends by denying God's word. Okay, if you'd look at it, look at verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Now, if God said, you shall surely die, which God did say, okay, and Satan comes and says, ye shall not surely die. What did Satan just do? He called God a what? Called him a flat out liar. It's pretty bold, isn't it? By the way, you and I have done the same thing by living hypocritical. We've said we've loved God and we love sin. We've served sin, although we call ourselves a Christian. Let me tell you something. We may have got a liar in our lives sometimes. Satan's done it. Where do you think we got it from? Satan just flat out calls God a liar. He takes it. He goes, you know what? God doesn't know what he's talking about. You're not going to die. He was exaggerating. He stretched a little bit. Don't worry about it. It's all right. God's pulling your leg. But I'm reminded what John 8, 44 says. The Bible says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Anything Satan ever says is a lie. See, here you have two completely thoughts, two different thoughts, church. God says they'll die. Satan says they won't die. And by the way, if the fruit wasn't so, if the fruit wasn't good or wasn't tempting, they would have never partook. It wouldn't have been, I mean, if it didn't look good. I mean, if it looked like a barbed wire sitting on the tree, they probably wouldn't have ate it, right? If it was rotten, they wouldn't have, ugh, no thanks, you go ahead, I'm good. But it was good, it was tempting. That's the way Satan always does. Man, Satan always makes it look so good. So appealing. Eve couldn't see the filth that she was getting into. Satan made, made this appear so good. That's the subtlety of Satan. And by the way, folks, that's what he does in our life. He's so subtle. He doesn't put a sticker on it and go, warning, this is a lie. I'm going to lie to you. This is sinful if you do it. You better not partake. This is, you know, I think it was the surgeon's warning on the back of cigarettes. You know, obviously those who smoke it don't read it. But still, you know, they put it on there. They slap it on there. It's real tiny. Kenny Harley, we've got to get a magnifying glass. Satan Satan doesn't even put that on there. He he doesn't walk around and go, hey, by the way, I'm fixing, I'm going to lie to you, Brenda. He doesn't do that. He goes, hey, psst. did God really say what he said? I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I wasn't there. You, you tell me. And then she goes, well, you know, um, you, you know, God said we, we, we can eat of every tree except this one, and we can't touch it. And he goes, oh, we can't touch it. Okay. You know, you're not going to die if you do. Then he starts to distort and deny God's word. Calls him a liar. But Eve is so duped, and, and in a minute we'll start to see what happens with Adam. But it's kind of like this illustration. I really want you to get this. It's kind of like this illustration. These, these girls in high school kept, um, kept putting lipstick on their lips and then going in the mirror in the, in the bathroom and uh, kissing the mirror, putting their lips on the mirror. You know, I, I don't know why girls do that, but they did. And, uh, well, the janitor... Kept having problems. I don't know if you've ever tried to get lipstick off of a mirror or anything like that, but it smears. 
And, and so the, the janitor was having so much problem, went to the principal, you know, we got to catch these girls, don't know who they are, da, 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 da. Well, they finally caught the girls doing it. And so the principal, you know, told the girls, quit doing it. We, well, they kept doing it. Well, he says, you know what, we got to come up with a better plan. So he gets the janitor, they come up with a little something, and, and so he gets the girls, and he gets the janitor, and they go in the girls' bathroom and says, okay, girls, uh, we understand that you're not listening to what we told you. We told you quit doing it. You're not doing it, listening to us. So I just want you to see what the janitor has to go through to clean the mirror. I mean, it's a pain, and, and there's so much tediousness to it. I want you to see it, so maybe this will help you not do it. And so he go ahead and proceeds to tell the janitor, if you could clean this mirror, that would be great. So the, 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 the janitor gets his brush out, goes right in the toilet, gets that toilet water, and goes right up to the mirror and starts cleaning the mirror off. Ever since then, they never had a lipstick problem. Do you get it, Brother Charles? Because you're star staring at me like a deer in the headlights. You got it? <laughs> That's gross, man. Ugh. I need a stick of gum now. It's so bad. I got a <laughs> mental picture here. Hey, can I tell you something? Really don't, we really don't understand the filth that we're kissing up to when we sin. Because Satan doesn't show us that. Those girls had no idea what they were kissing. Neither did Eve. Satan's very subtle. Satan will tell you, Satan will tell you, you know what? You deserve it. After all, you've worked hard. You deserve it. Satan will tell you, you know what? Your wife doesn't understand you. She doesn't appreciate you. You know what? You, you, you just should because she doesn't understand you. I mean... You know, you can only do so much. Satan lies. Satan says, you know what? I wouldn't go back to that church because all they do is preach against your sin. And apparently someone tells the preacher about your sin because those messages are right to you. And so if I was you, I wouldn't go back. I had one person tell me that a while back. He said, has someone talked to you? And I'm like, about what? And then I started to realize... Man, they thought that I knew something specific. And I'm like, listen, man, that's just God convicting you. But, but on the other hand, it's Satan convinc convincing you that we know all about your problems. Hey, let me, you know what I know? You want to know why I know your problems? Because I have your problems. That's why. I've, I've had your problem. I've had your sin problem. I know how to deal with it. Problem is we don't deal with it. We'd rather kiss the mirror. Let it be someone else's problem. God's warning and God's trying to let you see here clearly, man, the damage that was done. And next, I want you to know and see the subtlety of, the, of Satan, but I want you to see the sin of Adam. Look what happens here. Go to verse 6. Tell you what, let's just continue reading. Go to verse 5. We've already read verse 4. For God doth know, Satan continues his tyrant. His life. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You will be deity. You'll be like him. Didn't that sound good, Eve? Uh-huh. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, hey, man, that thing, man, it's an apple turnover hanging there. It's all warm. Better take it. I don't, it's not an apple turnover, folks. But, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Look at that. It's good. Wasn't rotten. Wasn't a worm coming out of that thing. It was good to the eyes. It was appealing. And a tree to be desired to make one wise? I mean, are you, are you serious? I mean, I'm going to be as God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know all this stuff. I mean, that's just too good to be true. And if it's too good to be true, it probably what? Yeah. You know, sometimes we're... How many of you are just hard-headed? Raise your hand. Go. Yeah, we aren't we? Don't. I saw that. People are helping other people raise their hands. 
Well, you know, we're, we're slow learners, folks, aren't we? I mean, man, boy, Eve is buying into this hook, line, and sinker. Something remarkable happens here. And she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Hey, Adam, here you go, big boy. Thanks, Eve. Boom, he takes a bite. I want you to notice something in your hand now. I want you to write this in. Adam becomes the first human sinner. Say, whoa, whoa, preacher, whoa. Eve ate first. Yes. Eve did eat first because she was deceived. But Adam flat out rebelled against God's commandment. You know, in, even in today's society, it's mostly men that are rebellious, not women. I'm not saying that women aren't rebellious. It's mostly men. There are more men prisons than there are women prisons. It's mostly men. God has appointed the man to be over the head of the household as Christ is head of the church. Adam knew. Eve was deceived. Adam knew the commandment, and yet he still stood by there. Eve didn't have to go look for Adam. It was Adam who was the first human sinner. Folks, we are descendants of Adam, and I'm going to tell you why. There's a picture that's happening. I'm going to, I don't have time to share this with you. Next week is going to, is going to be incredible. Seed comes from the man. We are descendants of Adam. We are born into sin. Adam was declared the sinner. God held Adam responsible. And here Adam takes the fruit and eats it. In 1 Timothy 2.14, the Bible says, And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The Bible even goes on to say Adam wasn't deceived. He rebelled. Adam knew what he was doing. He knew that he was rebelling against God's commandment. But Eve was deceived. Adam just flat out rebels and does what he wants to. Yet both of them eat the fruit. But who is charged with the crime? Adam is. God has made the man the head of the home, head as Christ is the head of the church. We're not to be lords, men, or dictators, but servant leaders. We lead by example and by serving, not demanding or promoting our headship. We are to be the provider and protector. That's not what Adam did. Adam flat out rebelled and sinned. In your handout, Romans, you should have a verse there, I think, Romans 5.12. Wherefore... As by one, what? Didn't say woman. Didn't say Eve. Said by as by one man, sin entered in the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon how many? All men, for that all have sinned. It was Adam's fault. He is to blame. There's corruption in Eden. Things that were once perfect are now corrupt. It's a bad place to be. Both of them took, but Adam is charged. Say, say, what does he do? I'll tell you what he does. He, 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 tries to, he, he tries to hide his nakedness in your handout. He attempts to hide his nakedness before God. Look at verse 7. Okay, they eat it, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. Say, oh, 
They took a crochet class. They knitted. Yeah, that's cute, but let me tell you something. It's not cute here. What was Adam and Eve's answer to their nakedness? What was their answer? Let's hide it. What do we do today when we sin? We hide it. This is the first example of a man-made religion. Ta-da! I'm not so bad. Look at me. It was their attempt to deal with their own sin. It was Operation Fig Leaf. Right? It's a fig leaf religion. And by the way, people teach it in water baptism today. Fig leaf. Man, if you just if you get washed, I'm sorry, washed by the blood. Okay? That's, that's how my sins are washed away. It's not through water baptism. It's a spiritual baptism. You know, no, you know it's, it's how about religious ri- rituals? Or if you just keep the Ten Commandments? Or if you just keep the golden rule? Really? How's that working out? Adam was attempting to deal with his sin on his own. Hey, honey, uh, quick, go, go grab them leaves over there. Quick. Let's, let's, let's sew them together. He attempts to hide his nakedness. What else does he do? He attempts to hide himself from God. He hides his nakedness, then he hides from God. Look at verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Yeah, that's going to do it. Yeah, that's going to work. Yeah, he created this and you're going to... Yeah, like he doesn't know where everything's at. Say, what is this? This is a picture of what happens Sin separates man from God. Man wants to hide from God. Yet it's impossible. Oh, well maybe he won't find out. Maybe God will never know. Shh! Be real quiet. We'll just keep, we'll keep this between us. God won't know. God won't know. After all, what he doesn't know won't hurt. Right? Well, look at Psalm 69.5. Oh God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Amos, we don't have time to go there, but Amos 9 talks about that, 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 that they... They, they fleed away. They, they, they tried to escape, uh, 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 but they couldn't be delivered. That they even tried to uh, get away from judgment, and they, uh, they, they tried to dig into hell, uh, uh, but, but they, and try to climb up to heaven, uh, but they were brought down, the Bible says. The Bible says that they even hid themselves in the top of Mount Carmel. And God says, I will search them out. He says, and nothing will be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea. Thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. God says nothing is hid from me. Matthew 10, 26 says, Fear not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. God sees it all. Isn't that amazing? Folks, we do the same thing. We just don't do it with fig leaves anymore. We do it by staying home when the pressure's on. We do it, we stay at home when the preaching's hot. We do it, we stay at home and, and, and we don't go and, and, and people don't come. And, and they're fearful of God, a very loving God, a very merciful God. All he wants to do is redeem mankind to himself. And people have this mentality, God is just trying to judge me. And yes, he will someday, but he's not doing that today. Men hide themselves. Revelation 6 talks about that they hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. 
And they even cry to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 6. Imagine that day. I'd rather the mountain fall on me than to face God. My friend, don't wait till that day. Do it today. Repent today. Get rid of your fig leaf today and repent. See, what happens now that they're, they're duped and there's the subtlety of Satan? Eve is deceived and Adam sins. What happens next? Well, I'm going to tell you next week what happens. All right? Next week we will finish up corruption. Now listen, and next week we'll cover a catastrophe. A corruption happens, there's sin, and there's so much sin and wickedness in the world. God says enough. And there's a great catastrophe that happens. I'll share that with you next week. You don't want to miss. All right? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for our